for those of you who don't know me yet, if you're just finding my site or if you're just finding me online or just finding this video for the very first time, um, I built four eight figure companies. I've also built, advised, acquired and sold dozens of companies across multiple niches. And one of the most important decisions that I ever made in business was when I sold my first large company. And that decision was to build a board of directors. And I'm actually parked right now in the parking lot of where we're having our board of directors meeting. I'm going to be walking in in a few minutes. But before I walked in, I thought I'd sit down and I'd share with you um, some of the value that I get out of having a board of, a board of directors, um, why I put it together, and what kind of things we do in our meetings, and, uh, and how I put it together also, for those of you who want to put one together. And to be quite honest, what I'm going to talk about is going to be a, uh, applicable across the board, whether you are just starting in business or you have a million dollar company, $10 million company, a $50 million company, a hundred million dollar company or so forth. And it also goes the same for whether you're putting together a board of directors or a board of advisors. In fact, this is probably far more applicable if you're putting together a board of advisors, because there's a lot of legalities for a board of directors that I'm not going to go into today. But, uh, and, and by the way, if you like this kind of topic, if you want more topics like this, just comment below and let me know. Um, and if you want more information about putting together your own board of advisors or board of directors, you want my help with that, then get in touch with Emily, who's been my assistant for, geez, 17 years now. Uh, and you could get her information uh, either right underneath this video, or you could email her at emily at chrisguerrero.com, and she'll get back in touch with you pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, why I put the board of directors together was very simple, and it's that uh, I had a very important need when I sold my first company, and that's that I, I knew my core competency was very, very strong with uh, growing companies and with bringing in revenue but very weak with what to do with cash when it came into my own personal hands. So putting together a board of directors was super important for me and very valuable for me um, to have this group of minds um, that were super uh, good at not just what I wanted to do right now with the bulk of money coming in, but also what to do with money as it comes in from other ventures that I have to invest in and grow those other ventures. And I'd be more than happy to create another video if you guys want to share with you what we do with our money in order to keep growing our, our, uh, our entities. Um, but just let me know in the comments below. So I put that board together initially for that one purpose. Now that board has transformed my life in many different ways. It's giving me a sounding board for every opportunity that comes across my desk. We, th there's, there's eight brilliant minds on this board from, from a gr variety of industries. So I get insight into how other CEOs in other industries handle problems and they handle money and they handle the growth of their company and they scale their company in different industries. And I get a chance to utilize all that inside of my company and also share it uh, on my site. So if you guys want to see any of that stuff, just go to chrisguerrero.com and we share a lot of that over there and also on videos like this. But anyway, I put that's why I put the board of directors together. The reason why you might put a board of directors or a board of advisors together is if you are scaling right now and you need great people to help you scale. If you need people who are willing to and motivated to open up their Rolodex for you and create relationships for you that you may not have any other place, then that's a terrific reason to put together a board of advisors or a board of directors. The way I originally started doing it, which you could just steal this tactic, it's so, it makes things so simple, is I knew exactly what I needed. Like I knew the kind of brains that I needed to surround myself with in order to go from where I am to where I wanted to be. So I created an, a, a process org chart, an organizational chart that had me at the top and then a box underneath it for each major process that I needed to, to actually get a handle of. And, uh, and I put three or four or five bullet points into each one of those boxes underneath there. And then I knew the kind of person that I needed to fill that seat on my board. And you could do the exact same thing. And then after 
after we did that, after I had that all mapped out and I did this, I remember super late, or maybe even super early in the morning, right? Because it was probably two or three o'clock in the morning and I was stressed over the fact that I was uh, in the midst of selling this company and I didn't know exactly how to close the sale. I didn't know all the intricacies of what was going to happen during the sale, after the sale, and then what to do with the money once it came in to my bank account. So I started to create that organizational chart. And then once I did that, I started to reach out to my contacts. Now, this was back in 2004 that I put this board together. So that's quite a long time ago. And, and, and what we're still together because part of having a board is creating relationships with everybody on that board. And again, we could go a little bit more in depth with that either now or simply comment in the comments below and, uh, and, and, and we'll come out with a video like that if I see that people want to know that. However, um, you know, this is, it's such a powerful group of folks that once you have that organizational chart done, once you know exactly who you need on there, I ended up reaching out to people that I knew saying, Hey, I'm looking for this kind of person. I'm looking for them for a board seat. This is how I'm going to, uh, you know, you know, motivate them to want to be on the board. Now, if I were doing it again today, like today, when I start or when I invest in a company, or even when I go in as an advisor to a company, one of the first things I do is I help them set up a board of advisors because that's such a major, that's had such a major impact on the growth of my companies. I'm sorry I'm getting distracted because I'm watching the guys on my board right now walk into the building. So we're going to have to cut this short. And then I'll promise I'll come back after the board meeting and I'll fill in the gaps. Um, but Right now, if I were doing it now, instead of reaching out to my contacts, I would reach out on LinkedIn. And I would what I would do is I'd look at the kinds of people that I want in each one of those seats. And then after I figure out the exact kinds of people, I'd look at the companies that that are out there now that have awesome people running that kind that, that department inside their company or utilizing that core competency or that key set of abilities inside of those growing companies. And I'd find those companies on LinkedIn and then I'd find those people inside of those companies on LinkedIn and I'd reach out to them with a very simple in mail and I'd say something like, Hey, my name is Chris Guerrero and I'm, you know, I've, this is my track record. You know, I've built four eight figure companies. I've built these other smaller companies as well that have had some great momentum, but have not hit the eight figure mark yet. And, and I'm putting together this other company and I want a board of advisors in this other company and you have the skill sets that I'm looking for now. If I'd love to talk to you about potentially having a seat on that board. And if you're not interested, I know that like-minded people hang out with like-minded people. So if you could recommend somebody, I'd really appreciate it. And that in mail would come from me personally. So if you're doing this right now and you're writing those things out and you're creating that in mail um, uh, uh, correspondence that would go out via LinkedIn, then you want it to go from you because you want the kingpin, the CEO of your company, you to be reaching out so that they know you're serious and ask them to just reach out to you and give you a referral or, or get on the phone with you for 15 minutes to get a little bit more detail. Now, compensation for folks on our boards are uh, almost always an equity position. So we may have a board of directors where, uh, I'm sorry, we may have a board of advisors where we give them 500 or a thousand bucks per meeting. But to be quite honest, none of those boards ever really push the drive, the growth of our companies, the boards that drive the growth, the best are usually the ones that have the most motivated people on them. The people who have such strong knowledge and, and, and strong relationships outside of our company that could help us that we are properly motivating and we motivate them with, equity in the company. It's a very, very small percentage of the equity. And that equity stance begins the day they sign the paperwork and then it moves on from there, right? So it's, it's the day you sign. So it might be a 1% equity interest in the company from the day you sign for as long as you are on the board. And if you are on the board, when we sell the company, you get 1% of the sale of the company too. So Again, this is Chris Guerrero. I'll give you more. I'll finish this video a little bit later after my board of directors meeting. But if you like this, comment in, this, in the comment section below. Let me know what you want me to answer in the next video. Um, you know, do whatever you need to do in there so that I know how to come back to you with more great information. But I got to get going right now. 
and then I will pick up where we left off after the meeting's over with tonight.